What's going on YouTube? Paul Paul Piper back at you here with another pipe tobacco review and today we're going to be reviewing Daughters and Ryan's Rimboche SJ. It's a Virginia Perique blend from Daughters and Ryan and uh, let's go ahead and get a look at the presentation here. Comes in a 40 gram 10. I think that's Mr. Ryan himself right there. And Got some uh, branding on the back. I'll go ahead and read that for you here. Rimboche SJ, a flavorful blend of the finest flu-cured gold leaf tobaccos and a rare St. James Parish Perique. This product intended exclusively as pipe tobacco. So that's the uh, presentation. Let's get a look at the cut of the leaf itself. As you can see it's quite light very dry it's very very dry and then you've got some darker leaf in there so the lighter leaf is your Virginia and the little bit darker is your Perique and this is kind of a, a special Perique it's uh, Saint it's Perique that is grown and and made in uh, st. James Parish down there in bio country in Louisiana and uh, if you read about Perique its history how it's grown and um, that sort of thing processed. It's pretty interesting. In the numbers of uh, Perique farmers and manufacturers in this country um, is critically low. Although here most recently with the resurgence of interest in pipe tobacco uh, in the hobby, uh, I think there's actually a growing number of acres under cultivation of Perique. So that's good. That's encouraging. You know, we're seeing American tobacco farmers um, actually increasing the amount of production so we don't have to rely on all this foreign tobacco. Not that I, I mean, I like a lot of foreign tobacco, but I like to see American farmers and, and workers employed and, and that sort of thing. Um, if you get a sniff of this stuff, like I said, it's very dry, very dry. And something that kind of separates Daughters and Ryan as a company is that they do not add any sort of casings or toppings or anything. It's just plain tobacco. And that's commendable. If you check out my last video, kind of talked a little bit about the need to return to nature, be more natural in the stuff that we consume and that we put out in the environment. Uh, you know, stop relying so much on all these herbicides, pesticides, and uh, gen genetically modified organisms, GMOs, and uh, you know, go go back to the good old natural form, and that's what Nish Daughters and Ryan is trying to fill. And it, I don't know if it's out of a concern for that or that they think that it tastes better, smokes better, and there may be something to that too. So, um, but as far as scent that you're going to get, it's very grassy. And it's got the Virginia in there. And like I said, without having any sort of casing, topping, anything like that, just the un unadulterated form of the tobacco, it almost tastes as if you have some dried out grass clippings. You know, they've had all their moist moisture leached out of them. And if you were to smell that, that's what this tobacco smells like. So, um, all in all, from that standpoint, not bad. Let's go ahead and grab your pipe. I've got this preloaded. I've actually started smoking it already. Grab it. Let's light up and enjoy a bowl together. As far as flavor that you're going to get, again, this is Virginian and Perique. So we're looking at the Virginia characteristics of grassiness and citrus maybe a little bit of honey in there and with the Perique it's got a spiciness to it and if you really focus on the spiciness it's almost like potpourri like a nutmeg that's kind of what I'm tasting So all in all, I mean, it's a full-bodied smoke. 
I would consider this full bodied. With some spiciness and just a natural quality to it. I like it. And I'm smoking a uh, another nondescript, all it says has an inscription here of imported briar. And it's a smooth, I think this would be called a bulldog, I do believe. It's got a nice little silver band on it and a slight bend. The lip on it's fairly wide. Another pipe that I picked up, real cheap, at an antique store or something like that. And if you see my pipe tamper, I've had this since I was probably 14 or so. And uh, so I've had it a good many moons. And uh, and it's got this tool pretending like that. It's got kind of a serrated edge at the end, some teeth, clean out your bowl. Um, so I picked it up at an old farm auction. I know my last video talked about kind of that tradition when I was growing up in rural Ohio. And I picked it up as a box lot. And they had a, I was about 14, 13, something like that. And they had an old pipe rack with some old pipes and a pouch and you know some pipe tools I think I maybe paid five or ten bucks for the whole lot at that auction and uh, that was kind of the beginning that was the beginning of my pipe collecting and you know that sort of thing may seem kind of young but I tell you I'm kind of an old soul so But uh, I want to use this time as an opportunity um, to give some shout-outs. This is a new channel, and I appreciate everybody that's commenting and subscribing. And uh, you know, I want to give you recognition for that. Um, I do also want to say that for whatever reason, uh, I've been unable to uh, post replies or comments even on my own video threads not all my videos but a lot of them it says comment failed to post and if anybody out there can explain to me what I need to do I know the security settings and that sort of thing the video settings are all open but for whatever reason people some people are able to post on my videos but I'm unable to uh, post a reply or, or do anything like that so if anybody knows what I need to do, um, put a comment below and let me know. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm not the most technologically savvy individual. Again, I'm an old soul. So you know, if it was, I guess, up to me, I'd probably live in a bygone era. Maybe that's why I like smoking pipes so much. Don't know. So... I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you. A lot of times I'm able, I'm still able to hit like on your comments, but it won't let me post a reply. But not every video is that way. So, like I said, but I've checked the settings, don't know what's going on. So let me go ahead and give a shout out. Now this won't be all my subscribers um, because some of you have, I think, your settings. Keep it anonymous or whatever. But shout out to the Deplorable Piper. I like that name. Uh, Christopher Watt, Padre Piper. Down Neck, Timber Drifter, The JB Smokes, Dot Dash 519, Scholar 4A, Alias Name, another good one, Piping Hot Briar, like that, Jared Wood, John Archer, Alan Smedley, Red Dirt Blue Skies, good name, Canadian Piper 604, and Shiner91. And I'll also give some shout outs to Mike Ortiz, Motorcycles, Tobacco and Alcohol, and Canary Rising 12. Again, that's not everybody that's subscribed or commented, but it's a good majority of them.
So thank you, folks. Um, I appreciate the warm welcome that I've kind of received in the YouTube pipe community. And, uh, you know, it's kind of nice that we can do these videos and share our opinions. Have an open forum. We don't have to agree with everything. I mean, I'm pretty opinionated. And uh, I don't expect you to believe or, you know, agree with everything that I say. But I think, I can't remember who it was. Whether it was Mark Twain or one of our greatest thinkers, writers, said, I do believe that, uh, just to paraphrase, if more people discussed issues of importance with a pipe in their mouth, there would be far less war, strife, famine, and that sort of thing. And I think that's true. If you get a bunch of pipe smokers together, where you can actually sit and contemplate, digest what the other person is saying. Because you're always focusing. You're focusing on the tobacco and that sort of thing, plus what they're saying, and you're taking it all in. And uh, if more people did that rather than jumping to conclusions and rushing their judgment in matters and failing to be introspective, you know, that's what leads to bad results. So, whoever said that, like I said, I think it might have been Mark Twain, maybe. Might have been Einstein, too. Can't remember. But, um, anyway, folks, uh, what else is going on here? Try to keep this video a little bit shorter. Tonight is the Oscars. Okay? I don't know if any of you are watching or did watch. Um, I, for one, did not watch. Um, not only because I was busy watching The Walking Dead, which I do enjoy, but who wants to sit around and watch a bunch of elitist Hollywood idiots go up there and spout off about injustice and poverty and uh, anti-gun issues, talk about, you know, taking in all these refugees and illegal immigrants and all that sort of thing, you know. It's just hypocritical, you know. Um, they're sitting there in their multi-million dollar mansions, make millions of dollars off of movies that have popular appeal and, uh, you know, use guns and that sort of thing. I hate that when I see somebody like Brad Pitt, who is a big anti-gun, big government idiot, you know, and he makes some movie where he's shooting everybody up, you know, because that's what makes money. So, uh, you know, they're making money off of being hypocrites. And it's not just Brad Pitt, it's pretty much all of them. So, and it's not just, you know, gun issues and that sort of thing. You know, there's, name your issue. You put some borderline communist, socialist idiot in Hollywood. And, uh, you know, they make money off of the opposite. And then use the platform like the Oscars to verbally thrash us into saying how much of a uneducated, racist, bigoted, you know, country we are, and that sort of thing, and, uh, you know, they live in their gated communities, you know, their lily white communities, they don't have to live in Malmo, Sweden, or, you know, in the bad parts of Chicago, and, uh, you know, the no-go zones in London, and, you know, the refugee areas in um, Calais, France, and Paris, and stuff. You know, they don't live in those bad areas. They live in the, you know, private security, high dollar, high taxes. So it pays for, you know, more and more police and stuff to protect them. They have guards. You know, their private security and their personal guards and stuff are all well armed. Um, meanwhile, they try to, you know, put all this propaganda out to 
disarm the public, you know. Well, why don't you give up your guns, and we'll see see what happens to you, you know. And live in those areas, and go ahead and take in a bunch of unvetted refugees. And once you do that, and when the ones that are, you know, commies, or borderline commies, I'll say, I'm not trying to start a new Red Scare or anything, you know, give all your money. The IRS will take it. Give all your money to the IRS and, uh, you know, practice what you preach. Take in a bunch of unvetted refugees and you pay for them. You pay for their care and everything. They live in your house. Then once you do that, then maybe you can lecture us. But until you do that, don't. And don't use the Oscars and that sort of thing. So I haven't watched it for years, you know. I don't even watch a lot of movies that come out. Very, very seldom will I watch any new movies. I think the age of Hollywood greatness um, and blockbusters and that sort of thing kind of went the way of blockbuster video, meaning it went out of business. It no longer exists. You know, They don't make really, really good movies anymore. They're always movies that have some sort of politically charged, socially charged theme in them. You know, and usually it's from the left side of the spectrum. And, you know, I don't pay the amount of money that they want for a ticket to be lectured and to made to think that I'm, you know, some horrible creature. So, I, uh, I guess I'm kind of boycotting them. But anyway, folks, that's been the soapbox for the evening. Rimboche SJ. Try it. Again, a company that's focusing on quality leaf. No casings, no toppings, just tobacco. And they're trying to focus on some of the you know rare perique and, and using that. Um, so that's commendable. So pick it up, give it a try. Price is pretty good on it um, for 10 tobacco. And uh, I think you'll like it. So like I said, a pretty, pretty strong mixture. Full bodied, it's good, it's good. Spicy, a little bit, with the pre. So, um, as far as a rating on it, you know, I'm gonna give it a, an eight out of 10. Maybe an eight and a half, but I'll go ahead and stick, yeah, eight and a half. Let's give it eight and a half. Um, it's good, it's up there, big time. So, anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, add some comments. Talk to me about, you know, if you've had Rinpoche SJ, um, what you th thought about the Oscars. Did you watch it? Did you not? Do you care at all? What do you think about all these elitist Hollywood actors and actresses, you know, when they go out and they try to spout off at the mouth? You know, free speech is good. I think I defend their right to say what they want. But, you know, I vote by not watching their movies and... Um, not watching the Oscars and those award ceremonies and that sort of thing. That's how you handle it. You know, if they were here and they wanted to have a discussion, I would have a civilized, peaceful discussion with them. Um, so, comment on that. Um, you know, anything at all. Anything that comes to mind. Let me know if you know where this pipe, who made this pipe. That was probably impossible to tell, but... It's stamped in Port of Briar. It's got the little silver thing. You know, maybe some of you guys out there would know. So, anyway, until next time, folks, it's been a pleasure. It's been Paul Paul Piper. Take care. <laughs>